Over the years, we've introduced you to lots of remarkable Iowans you had probably never heard of before. But this year, we've included the stories of some remarkable people who were, and still are, familiar names. People like the one and only Johnny Orr, whose 13 years of coaching Cyclone basketball produced overflow crowds and generated a kind of fanatical excitement known as Hilton Magic. It was over 20 years ago that basketball icon Johnny Orr moved to the state of Iowa. That's when he made a surprising move from Michigan to transform the Iowa State men's basketball team. It was a program that had endured eight losing seasons and four different coaches the previous decade. But with Orr's star quality personality and up-tempo coaching style, he patented Hilton Magic and in the process became Iowa State's winningest coach and a living legend. ISU basketball aficionados will remember Orr for turning university games into full-blown entertainment events and gaining national recognition for Iowa State. Who can forget his signature entrance into Hilton Coliseum every game to the theme song, Here's Johnny from The Tonight Show? Orr's enthusiasm ignited the crowds. He coached his way into the Iowa State Athletic Hall of Fame in 2001 and scored again this year when the Des Moines Register inducted him into its Iowa Sports Hall of Fame. Other ISU coaches have picked up where Johnny Orr left off. And while it's been more than a decade since Orr coached his last game, his fan-friendly appeal and his contributions to Iowa State athletics have us asking, where's Johnny? Johnny Orr, welcome to Living in Iowa. Well, thank you, Morgan. It's a pleasure to be here and nice meeting you. When you see tapes of yourself coming into uh, Hilton Arena to the strains of Here's Johnny, how does that make you feel now? Well, it makes me feel great. And no matter how many times they do it, you feel good. And they've had me back a couple times. They play it and get big goosebumps come on <laughs> you. And it's exciting. And it got to be a, a thing where people came to the gym just to hear that and watch that. And the coaches like Knight and, and Lute and uh, guys like Katie, uh, some of my better buddies, they, they, they wouldn't go to the locker room. They wanted to see me come out because they couldn't believe that, you know. It became and a highlight of the game. Well, yeah, and it became a very unusual thing because Knight used to call me and say, holy cow, you're nine and six and they're playing. Here's Johnny. I'm 16 and two and they're booing me sometimes. <laughs> and it, it became a national thing, really. Yeah. How involved with basketball are you right now, today? None whatsoever. Really? No. I, the only involvement, I shouldn't say none, I, I try to get my former players, a bunch of them, jobs, mm -hmm. and I help them get jobs and stuff like that. But as far as the actual doing anything with basketball with anyone, no, I have nothing. I don't scout or mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't do anything. Once in a while, I'll go to camp. For, for someone, if it's one of my, like I was at Freddie Hoiberg's camp this morning. But, uh, I don't, I don't do anything anymore with that. I seldom watch it. To I be was going to ask that. You. you don't watch much basketball no, then. In the professional basketball, I can't stand it, and I uh, don't like it. And uh, college basketball, I watch it. If one of my former colleagues are coaching, or if I can get Iowa, or Iowa State, or Drake. Uh, uh, Creighton, uh, he's a buddy of mine, and some of the guys that I, I know, uh, then I'll watch the game. Otherwise, if I turn it on, I see how much time's left. If there's three or four minutes, I'll watch it. <laughs> if it's the first quarter, I shut it off. I don't watch it that long. So where are your energies focused now? Well, i tell you what, mostly golf mm -hmm. and public relations. I work for INS, you know, and I'm their spokesperson. And I think my other thing is charities. And now my wife has Alzheimer's and, right. and we're uh, raising money. I've raised quite a bit of money for Alzheimer's and for all charities. Is it a kind of role reversal now with your wife? Because I know she was so supportive during your whole coaching career. And are you now sort of in the supportive role? Oh, I think so. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I've mellowed <laughs> mm -hmm. and everything. And anything she does is okay. You know, I, I don't get mad <laughs> mm -hmm. or anything like that. And she's doing very well. And she has a great attitude toward it. Yeah. A very positive attitude. And like she's 75 and I'm 77, we've had a great life. And we've lived longer than most people. Mm -hmm. And uh, her thing is to tell people about it to get diagnosed early, get good doctors. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you can live a pretty normal life for several more years. 
is she doesn't drive anymore. And there's a few things she doesn't do, but she cooks, she does the laundry, she does everything like that that she always did. Yeah. And, and we go out, everything like that. We don't go in big crowds too much anymore, but uh, that's all right. And uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a change, but it has been very limited. Are you able to take that positive attitude that you're so well known for and put it toward this newest challenge? Oh, you bet your life I do. I, I'm always positive, uh, particularly around her or around anyone connected with it or anything like that. And yeah. if they ask me to go somewhere to help them out, uh, I went to Sioux City already. I've been to uh, Dubuque before. I've been to uh, uh, Ames. I'm going to Ames and I'm in Des Moines again. And I've been to uh, Cedar Rapids to the Alzheimer's groups and help them raise money for research. I went to Washington, D.C. And appeared before the state, the Senate uh, Finance Committee, and wow, that was one of the greatest experiences I've ever had. I, I, that was bigger than any game I ever played in. Why is that? Well, I went out there, and and it's just like you see on TV. Uh, I'm down there at a the table, my wife and I, and we giving our pitch to the senators up there, and they don't ask you bad questions like they do Rumsfeld and some of those guys. <laughs> Well, uh, in regards to your uh, positive attitude, I think I read something recently that where you said that when you were a player, you didn't have such a positive attitude. Is that no. true? Well, I wasn't as nice a person as I am now, <laughs> like on an interview or anything like that. I used to get real mad if they asked me bad things, and yeah. things I didn't like, yeah. and that sort of thing. And then when I got married, and, and my wife, she said, uh, you shouldn't be like that. You, you, it's just as easy to be nice to people. And uh, so I started doing that, and I found out it was much easier to be nice. And I've been that way now for about 55 years. And that's what your fans love. Yeah, and they like you being friendly. And mm -hmm. I think particularly in Iowa, Morgan, I really think that Iowans, uh, people, uh, they want to see you. They want to shake hands with you. Mm -hmm. They want to feel they know you. Tell me what you miss about coaching and what you don't miss. Well, I don't really miss the recruiting that sort of thing and I don't I, I, I enjoyed the outings that you had to go to the fundraisers and that sort of thing and I enjoyed the kids the players I enjoyed the practices and the games and that sort of thing not many things I didn't like about it I, I will say they I got out before the big money came and now so many of them now are not like the old timers were it would go out and meet the people and stuff like that today they make so much money. They don't. They don't have to do any of that stuff. Uh, I had to have my own camp. I had to promote that mm -hmm. and get the kids to come. I had to do that. They don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. I had my TV show, my radio shows, and 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 I had to do it. I had to sell the advertising, and wow. and those things. Now they don't. They don't do any of that. You know. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times today, the head coaches they don't even show up. They send their assistants. And everything, and I never did that. Yeah, I never did that, and uh, it, it was a thing. I made a good living. I have a good retirement, and and the the greatest thing in coaching I ever did was come to I Iowa State. <laughs> but uh, I never realized when I came uh, that we would ever go to the NCAA, or that we'd ever fill that arena. Mm -hmm. You know, Ames is not a very big place, and uh, I never thought of that at all. And gosh, my, after my third year here, we filled it every game. Yeah. And, and uh, the fans, the greatest. Uh, they were the greatest. I mean, there's, I don't care where you went, they're never any better than they were here. They were not vicious. Yeah. They, they wanted to see great basketball. They wanted to see the teams. And they wanted to have fun, and they wanted to hear that song, Here's Johnny. Absolutely. And uh, it, it was a great thrill. Yeah. It was a great, particularly when we started winning. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would like you to kind of humor me because I have heard a couple of uh, sports radio interviews that are kind of what you call a flash interview, where the interviewer just uh, asks a quick question and you give just a quick response and tell me why you feel the way you do. Could we play that game? Do would it. you humor me? Okay. Just what's the best player you've ever seen? Who's the best player you've ever seen? Oh. I would say uh, there's, a, there's a lot of good ones there. Michael Jordan, because he's the latest one. But guys like Jerry West and uh, Wilt Chamberlain, Bill Russell, uh, oh, a lot of those, Oscar Robertson, my goodness. 
they were also great players, not the publicity that you have now. Why were they great? They were great because they were, could do everything. Uh, guys like Robertson, whew, he could do everything. Jerry West. Now, Wilt and, and uh, uh, Akeem and, and those kind of guys, they were big. But Wilt was a great athlete. Oh, man, he was a great He was a track man, high jumper, and, and uh, 440 man. Oh, he's terrific. They're all great athletes. Okay. Biggest disappointment in basketball coaching? Well, when I lost the national championship game, mm -hmm. uh, I was devastated there. We, we led it, and uh, we need another day's rest. I had a little team. We need another day off. But uh, we lost to a great team, and, and Knight and I became very good friends. Toughest coach to compete against? Yeah, there's so many of those. Uh, most of them were tough. I, 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 I think it, was, it wasn't the coach necessarily, it was the place. Uh, uh, like uh, Indiana, Purdue, uh, Kansas, and Kansas State. Those were tough places. Oklahoma State, whoever coached there was a tough place to go and, and that sort of thing. Uh, the, one of the worst places was Colorado because they never had any people there. <laughs> oh. They had very small crowds, and it, wasn't a, it, it was not a good atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Best high school memory? Winning the state championship. We won the state championship, won 45 games, and never lost a game in one year. And, and that was unbelievable. Yeah. Greatest accomplishment? Well, I think I coached all those years and never got fired. Never once was fired. Yeah. Last one, advice to young coaches. Well, I think, uh, to be honest, have fun doing it and make the kids have fun. Make them enjoy it and everything. And uh, I, I got into coaching because I liked it. it. It was something, and I couldn't believe they would pay me to do something that it was so much fun. Yeah. And I think too many coaches now, they're in it for the money. And I don't blame you for making money. I mean, I made money. I'm not going to lie to you on that. But uh, that wasn't the reason I was in the coaching. I was in it... Uh, because I enjoyed being with people. I enjoyed seeing a kid do something that I taught him to do, execute things, the team that I had worked on, and that sort of thing. But I'll tell you, Morgan, we always had fun at our practices. It, it, maybe not all the time. I'm not saying all the time. But before we left the floor, we always were together, and we had something positive to talk about. Well, you made this fun for me. Thank, well, thank you very you. much for thank being you, here. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you. You're very easy to interview. Thank you.